نستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال أن رجلا من البادية أو من أهل البادية أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فسأل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال متى الساعة أو متى الساعة قائمة فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم ويلك وماذا أعددت لها Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu an reported that a Bedouin came and asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a dangerous question. When is the day of judgment? And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, inna Allah indahu ilmu sa'a. This is one of the unseen things and one of the غيبي uh, things that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and no one knows it but this is a Bedouin and Bedouin you expect from them any questions and that's why uh, it's reported that this is Abu al-Khuwaysira radiyallahu an this is the same uh, Bedouin who came and urinated in the masjid before this is a famous uh, incident that we all heard of so one of the qualities of the people of the Badia or the Bedouins, uh, they're harsh and they ask questions. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they worry about asking questions, especially after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la tas'alu an ashya'a in tubda lakum tasu'kum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses uh, guiding the companions radiallahu anhum not to ask too many questions because sometimes you may ask a question and when the answer comes you don't like it so there are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not talk about not because he forgot about it it's because mercy for us but the Bedouin don't follow that rule so the Sahaba radiallahu anhum they used to like it when a Bedouin comes to sit and listen to the answers of their questions so he said, Mata Sa'a. So Al, uh, he wants to know what is the day of judgment. Fakala, look at the answer. Kala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Waylak, wa mada adatta laha. Waylak, this is uh, a negative dua. Uh, it's like woe to you. But this is to attract attention. It is not meant literally. He said, What have you prepared for it? See, we always ask questions but we are not doing anything about it. It's like a person would come and ask you, is smoking haram? He smokes and he's not planning to quit smoking, yet he asks the questions. So some people ask questions without intention to act upon the answer, and some people ask questions and they're supposed to be busy in other things rather than the question or the things that is a result of the question, like the Day of Judgment. We all know, and the Bedouin knows, there is a Day of Judgment. Why are you worried about it when it's going to happen? Or let's say that you are worried about it. What have you done for it? You just sit in your spot asking when, 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 and you could have done something positive toward it. So the Prophet ﷺ guided him to something better than his question. His question is when? He told him, what are you preparing for it? Look at the answer. Qala ya Rasulallah, ma a'adattu laha ghayra anni uhibbu Allah wa Rasulah. He said, I really did not prepare much for it, but I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Now pay attention to this because this sounds like empty love. You haven't done anything and you love. It doesn't match. The scholar said, 
love is the highest level of ubudiyya. It's the highest level of worship. To reach that level, you have to go with the basics to get to it. So this is assumed that he does the basics to get him to that. Also, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or love means that when you love someone, you are not going to disobey that person. So him loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, that means he's acting upon the commands of the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So when you get to that level, if you are truthful, the level of love, you have those things, the basics are there. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, told him, Anta ma'aman ahbabt. You will be in the same place with the one that you love. Not necessarily the same level, but in Jannah. And in Jannah, no prohibitions. If he's in Jannah and I'm in Jannah, doesn't matter where he is in Jannah, I can still be with him and see him and meet him and talk to him and all of that. So this is the meaning, anta ma'aman ahbabt. Because we know that everyone level in Jannah is based on what you strive. وَلِكُلِّ darajat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that Jannah is darajat. So you get the daraja that suits your actions. But when you are in Jannah, you will be there with everyone. You can see everyone and be with everyone. Uh, this is, uh, you know, talking about uh, this question or this hadith similar to uh, a sign of believing in the day of judgment is enjoining good and forbidding evil. A person who believes in the day of judgment, constantly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his mind because he wants to take advantage of every second rather than asking when is the day of judgment, I am working for the day of judgment. Sa'ala rajul shaykhan aw imaman faqala lahu yani salat al-fajr sa'bi jiddan alayhi. A young man asked the sheikh, and he said, Fajr prayer is very hard for me to wake up. فَقَالَ لَهُ الشَّيْخِ أَلَيْسَ لَكَ صَاحِبْ Don't you have a friend? Look at the answer. He told him, I can't wake up on Fajr. He told him, don't you have a friend? Relate to this. This is to say, what kind of friend do you have? Who are your friends? Hard for you to wake up at Fajr. Your friend cannot wake you up. You don't work with your friend to help each other who wake me up or pick me up or take me this or do this and that. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he was busy with work and the Sahaba were too. What does he used to do when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the revelation coming. He has a friend. He agreed with him. I go to work today. You stick around and find out what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa teaches and you come and you teach me that. Tomorrow, you go to work and I stick around and see that. This is the friendship. This is what benefits you. So he's asking, I can't wake up and he's telling him, where is your friends? When was the last time you woke up your friend? When was the last time you enjoined good and forbid evil? When was the last time you remind your friend, like for girls, if she wears hijab or if her hijab is improper, or when someone is doing something haram, when was the last time you advised someone to stay away from haram or to do something that is good and beneficial? What kind of friends do you hang with? What kind of friends do you have? Those who have negative friends would regret it. This love that you can't wait for your friend because he is so funny or he's so cute or he jokes and he plays and he's always having fun. He will be your enemy the day of judgment. And you would wish that you never had such as a friend because you need someone who helps you to make it to Jannah. 
not hinders you because we already have our problems, personal problems, self problems, shaitan, dunya, all of those things are against us. We need someone to support us. So don't get busy asking about the day of judgment. Work for it. And if you truly believe in the day of judgment, make sure you enjoy good and forbid evil. Check out what kind of friends you hang with and look for those who help you make it and succeed, inshallah, the day of judgment. فَبَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازْ نَسْأَلُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَنْ يَجْعَلَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ بارك الله فيكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته